I'll give you a little bit more on that in a second. Let's first mention briefly some specific needs that biomedical research must deliver. The first that we all know about. What about diagnostics? We all know and appreciate that we will never properly address the problem of MDR and XDR-TB until we have an inexpensive point of care molecular diagnostic that can quickly tell us whether we are dealing with sensitive or resistant microbes. Here is where our 21st century sequencing capabilities come in. As many of you know, we can now sequence microbes in hours, and we can create a data bank of the sequence of thousands, not scores, of, train, of strains of TB. Although we know the resistance conferring mutations for many strains of TB, we do not know them all. We need a data bank for TB genomic sequences similar to what we have and take for granted for HIV and for influenza, in which we already have thousands of sequences in our bank. And drug regimens can be easily designed depending on the molecular profile of these viruses, HIV and influenza. And molecular links to pathogenesis and host pathogen interactions can be made. We need that for TB. Next, we desperately need an effective vaccine against adult pulmonary TB. I'm sure that many of you have heard of the difficulties that AIDS researchers have encountered in the quest for an HIV vaccine and our lack of success using the classic empirical approach to testing candidate after candidate and our lack of understanding of the true correlates of immunity against the virus. This has prompted a return to pursuing some basic fundamental questions concerning the correlates of effective immunity in HIV disease, if indeed they even exist. With TB, despite our success at preventing extrapulmonary disease through vaccine use, we are actually ignorant with regard to the precise nature and effectiveness of the pulmonary host defense, be it innate or adaptive, to MTB. We certainly need to test vaccine candidates, and I'm encouraged that several are already in the pipeline. But we cannot ignore the basic questions, or we may wind up needing to backtrack later on, as we've had to do with HIV AIDS. Closely related to this issue of the host immune response to TB is, again, the question of latency. Two billion people in the world have latent TB. Why do we not know more about the mechanisms, maintenance of, and escape from latency? What elements of the immune response control latency, and can we harness them? Only 10% of people with latent TB who do not have immunodeficiency diseases such as HIV develop active TB over their lifetime. Why is that? Latency cannot just be an on and off phenomenon. There must be a spectrum of disease control with multiple mechanisms. Can we target people at the vulnerable end of the spectrum and proactively treat them? Speaking of treatment, we need to take a totally fresh look at how we treat TB. Everything should be on the table. Here again, and we can learn lessons from our experience with HIV AIDS, the huge success that we have had in HIV therapeutics has resulted, to be sure, from a robust pipeline of drugs directed at multiple targets in the HIV replication cycle. However, the success has been greatly influenced by the availability of sensitive and specific surrogate markers for the initiation and adjustment of therapy. For HIV disease, we had sensitive measurements of viral load to monitor the level of disease activity and the response to therapy. We had CD4 positive T cell counts to measure the level of immune system damage and recovery. We have no such tools for TB. There are no accurate measures of bacterial load and no meaningful or interpretable measure of host immune response to the microbe. As mentioned just a moment ago, a systems biology approach to TB potentially could provide important clues to such markers. Also, we need to look at drug regimens in there entirely and not just continue to add or subtract new drugs as is the current practice. 
We need to completely overhaul the existing drug regimens based on pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics in different population groups with different comorbidities. We also need to look at the possibility of more informative clinical trial methodologies. Some might call this appropriately operational research, and it is needed. There is a wave of new drugs that have emerged over the past decade that are entering clinical trials, and these cannot be evaluated without smarter trials that will evaluate more than just sputum clearance. To do this, we need, greater <clears throat> we need greater engagement of clinicians, and we need to expand the existing trial sites and utilize networks of clinical trials that have been put in place for other purposes. In this regard, I am in the process of now exploring the possibility, with the help of an esteemed advisory group of peers, of utilizing our extensive and generously funded HIV AIDS clinical trials networks for the implementation of similar clinical trial capacities for TB as well as other infectious diseases. This could provide an extraordinary boost to our ability to conduct clinical research on TB. Briefly, another important point, we feel that it is critical to engage the scientific communities in those countries most heavily burdened with TB. NIAID and NIH has and will continue to forge alliances and support research in countries such as China, Russia, Brazil, India, South Korea, South Africa, among many others. Also, it is essential to develop new and enhance existing partnerships with industry. Finally, my bottom line to you today is that, bottom, that biomedical research is indeed a critical component of the comprehensive and multifaceted program to control TB. Unfortunately, Biomedical research on TB has suffered from decades of relative neglect given the magnitude of the present and growing problem. Moving forward, TB research must be transformative and not just incremental. There is much catching up to do, and this will require a sustained effort with a long-term commitment whose benefits will certainly spill over to other important infectious diseases of global health significance. I promise you that NIAID will continue and heighten its commitment to the control of the global scourge of TB with a robust, creative, and aggressive research agenda. Thank you.